Welcome to this video tutorial on how to set up a render using Corona Render Engine within 3ds Max. I'm going to be working with this simple model I've imported in here and this follows on from my previous video on how to import geometry from Rhino into 3ds Max but you can create your geometry in 3ds Max originally and we can look at how to set that up from here as well. Now the first thing we need to do when rendering using Corona Render Engine is to make sure that that render engine is set in our 3ds Max file. To do that we're going to go up to the render setup up here or hit the F10 button on your keyboard and under renderer we're going to set this to Corona Renderer. Now this is usually set to scanline by default or depending on what other render engines you have you might have other ones to set within here but we're going to be setting ours to Corona Renderer, like so. And when you do that, you'll see that some of these menus change in order to work correctly with Corona Render Engine. Now, once we've done that, we're going to come back to our render properties after we've set the rest of our file up. But the thing we now need to do is we need to go through three main forms of setup to ensure that our visual is ready to render. That is the lighting of the object, the camera angle we're doing and the materials we're adding. So for this we're going to begin by setting up our camera angle and you'll see I've got my workspace set up in three views here. We've got a kind of main perspective view and then we've got a top view and a left view here and in this left view I'm going to set as my specific camera view. Now if you want to change your windows to look like this you can go down here and you can pick a new viewport layout and pick it from there. But I'm going to be working in this particular layout because I prefer this as my kind of default way of working. Now we're going to go over to our create tab and we're going to create a new camera under the little camera icon here. Under there we're going to go to Corona Cam because we're using Corona Renderer in this case we're going to use the specific camera attached to that render engine like so. And once we select that I'm just going to draw the camera out in space. Now depending on where your objects are this might sit above or below your object so we may then need to move it and I'm just going to make sure I select the camera, hold down the control key and select the target as well so I can move these both up on top of my plane like so. Now we've created this camera we can now set our left hand view here to be looking through that particular camera so we can see the view through the camera. Now if I click on the left icon we can then go to cameras and set that to be the same camera that we've created which is camera 1 here. And if we turn this from wireframe onto our default shading or maybe we'll set it to clay for now so we can see it clearly. We can then move the target around to change where the camera is looking and we can move the camera around to get the object in frame like so. Now you might find that it's clipping on the top slightly or we can't quite see it so we can always select the camera, go to the modify tab up in the top right hand corner and under the camera settings we can start to modify some of the camera's parameters so we can change the field of view, we can scroll down and go to the tilt and shift and we can shift this vertically upwards by a kind of smaller amount here if we want to get that object in frame and it's just a case usually of playing around with these parameters until you've got the right field of view for your object and around there I think my kind of object is in frame now. Now we've got our camera set I'm now going to set my materials for my object and to do that we're going to open up the material editor. This can be found in rendering, material editor and you can pick whichever material editor you want to use here. By default I use the Slate Material Editor and I'll be doing a video on the particulars of this Material Editor and why it's in use that will follow from this tutorial. In here all we're going to do for this session is we're going to pick the Corona Material under the Materials tab on the left and under Corona because we're using this specific render engine. We're going to click and drag it onto our board here like so. And we're not going to change any features of this material, I'm just going to select all the objects in my scene, double click on my material here and click on this apply material to selection tool there. Now you won't see any change because I'm in the clay layout here so I'm going to switch this back to default shading and there we can see our grey objects there and the same here. 
for this video I'm going to just leave the material as grey and we're just going to work with a kind of clay style render for now. So now we've set our white material on our objects we're now going to set up the lighting in the scene and to do this I'm going to just use an environmental sunlight to light up my object. If we go back to the create tab we can go to the lighting tab here and we can set a light system in our scene. Now by default it will be set to photometric but if you click on that tab you can find the specific corona lighting and you'll find that when you're using a specific render engine you always want to use the particular lighting camera materials for that render engine in order to make sure that your objects are rendering correctly. So we're going to select corona and we're going to create a corona sun here. And I'm going to just draw that out as I did with my camera and we can just lift the mouse up and it will move the sun vertically into position as well. Like so. So there we have our sunlight. So now we have our three elements of the scene. We've got our camera, we've got materials and we've got our lighting. So we can now do a test render to see how this scene is looking. Now I want to make sure that I'm always rendering in my camera view. So in order to do this we're going to open up the render setup again on here and where it says view to render we're going to make sure we're clicked in our camera view so it's got this little yellow border in 3ds max to tell us we're in that view and then i'm going to click on this padlock in order to lock that to my camera view there so now whichever view i'm in it will always be rendering this camera view and not any other views in that scene another thing we can now do is we can set the output size of our render and by default it will be a kind of 1.33 aspect ratio 640 by 480 and these numbers refer to the number of pixels in your final image. The higher resolution you want your render the higher this number needs to be but bear in mind that the higher you make that number the longer the image will take to render so you're weighing up the resolution in terms of render time. At the moment my frame here doesn't exactly match the aspect ratio of my image but if I want to show that we can click on my camera and go down to this show safe frames and what that would do is it would essentially lock the image to the aspect ratio I've set so if I set this to a square ratio 500 by 500 you'll see that that matches the ratio in this preview here so it's quite good to show those safe frames so you can see the frames that you're working with within your render there. Now we've set that we're going to select our view make sure it's in the right view here in the view to render and we're going to click on the render button to render it out. Always good to make sure you save before you do this because by rendering any object it uses a lot of your computer's power to essentially calculate the light in that scene so always make sure you hit the save button before you hit render. Now that's loading up we'll have a look and see how our image is coming out. Once you do this your render would open up in a separate screen here and we'll have a kind of total render elapsed time on the left hand side and you can see it's ticking through passes here while counting down the time. The number of passes is equivalent to the quality of the final output of the render and you'll see that areas which are quite noisy with lots of grain will get less noisy the higher that pass number goes. Now at the moment I'm going to stop this render out here and you'll notice that my image is quite heavily overexposed. It's very, very bright. And this is a byproduct of using the sun in Corona Render. It's often kind of very bright and it lights up your scene a lot more than expected. So what I usually do with this is I just go to the tone mapping on the right hand side of my frame here. And under post, we can lower this down to a value where we can start to see our objects and we don't have that kind of bright overexposure. Usually for this it's about a minus four until you kind of get a good amount and we want it to not be blown out and what I mean by that is where you've got the white at the purest kind of white value that's slightly blown out there so we want to make sure that we're using a slight tone just below that highest white value. You can always brighten images up in post but it's very difficult to darken them down again once they're overexposed. So I usually go for a minus 4.5 here to just give myself some room to work with so we can always add extra lights in and brighten the scene up if needs be. So here you can see 
our kind of static object in space there. Now what we can do is we can start to play around with the camera angle and the lighting as per the render. And if you want to test these in real time as the object is rendering, we can use Corona Renderer's interactive render viewport. If you click and hold on the render button, you've got this start IR, and IR stands for interactive render. And if we start that, you'll notice that the image is rendering there, but we can also begin to kind of move around objects in the scene. So if I look at this top view over here, I can select my sun and I can start to move it around the object and have a look at the render to see how this is affecting the image. So we can play around with this lighting until we get a kind of nice angle of lighting here. And I think I'll go for a kind of low sun from kind of this angle there as well. We can also do the same with the camera. I could kind of move the camera in if I want it kind of framing the object slightly better. Or we can rotate the angle around if we want a slightly tighter angle on the object there as well. Now the last thing I'm going to do to set this render up is we're going to add a kind of environment because at the moment we've got this kind of black sky and it's looking a little bit static and I want to have a nice blue sky in this. Fortunately for us Corona Renderer comes built in with an environment we can add and if we click on the sun icon here I can go to the modify panel to look at the parameters of this object and I can just click on add Corona Sky environment here. And what this would do is it would just add a default environment map to my object, which will give us that nice blue sky there. So if we load up our render again, and I hit my interactive or render button, you can now see we've got this nice blue sky added. And this would change in color depending on the height of the sun in the sky. So now we have our render set up, we can now make sure we're rendering it out at the right resolution. So once you've got your render fully set up, as so, we can open up our render setup again and close my materials for now. We can set the output size, which I'm going to up now to one by one, and I'm going to lock the aspect ratio so we remain in that square format. So we've got a 1000 by 1000 pixel image. And if we want to make sure that this renders for a specific time as well, I can also set that in my scene and we can give it a time limit here or a pass limit if you know that at 100 passes it reaches the quality required you can set that so I can set this for a five minute render here and if I want it to automatically save after that point we can go back to the common settings scroll down to render output and I can choose where my file is saved here as well so let's just put it on the desktop for now in a new folder We'll call this number one and I'm going to save it as a JPEG file there. So this will automatically save once my five minute time is up there and now all I need to do is hit the render button and this image will now start rendering it out for five minutes in there. If we want to save before that time we can also hit the save button here and save out an image from there as well. So you don't have to wait for that time to be up, but this will automatically save it for you once it reaches that five minute time. So that was a quick video tutorial on how to set up a render in Corona Render Engine for 3ds Max. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll be following up this video with more tutorials on how to use Corona Render within 3ds Max for visualization and animation. Thanks for watching.